brought to you by Bangkok Bank. Rachamongkon University of Technology, Thanyaburi. Good morning, ASEAN. Freshen up your world, your thought, and your idea with us every weekday from 7.30 to 8 a.m. I'm Patsurang Desha Putarangsi. And I'm also here with you, Nirisha Melissa Lumi. And today is Tuesday, 27th of August, 2013. Let's start with the news. In Cambodia, as Cambodia's longtime opposition leader, Sam Rensi, once again threatened to call nationwide demonstrations if an independent committee was not established to look into allegations of poll irregularity. Sam Rensi, president of the Cambodian National Rescue Party, or CNRP, said in a press conference at the party's headquarters yesterday that the party strongly insists the establishment of an independent committee to investigate election irregularities before the release of the final election results on September 8. Renzi insists that the compositions of the proposed independent probe committee exclude the current National Election Committee, or NEC, seen as being loyal to the ruling Cambodia's People's Party, or CPP, of long-serving Prime Minister Hun Sen. However, the CPP has rejected the request, saying that no probe committee would be formed without the NEC's involvement because it was against the Cambodian law. Renzi said that if his party request is not met, the last resort is non-violence and peaceful protest throughout the country. So does police and military police with armored vehicles have been deployed around Phnom Penh city since early this month after the opposition has repeatedly threatened to call on mass protests. The country held a general election on July 28. Initial elections results show that the ruling CPP won the election with 68 seats of the 123 parliamentary seats, while the opposition CNRP got the remaining 55 seats. Tens and thousands of Filipinos flooded the center of Manila and other cities on Monday to demand the abolition of a misused fund for legislators' pet f uh, projects, uh, the biggest protest aimed at Benigno Aquino's government. Aquino came to office in 2010 on a good governance and anti-corruption platform and consistently enjoys popularity ratings of more than 70 percent. But the Philippines remains one of the most corrupted countries in East Asia. Protesters responding to a call to wear white converged on Manila's largest park, angry at the misuse of pork barrel funds under the Priority Development Assistance Fund, or PDAF. The money is frequently channeled to projects solely to impress voters, though many have turned out to be non-existent. Vilamina Sinco, spokesperson for Manila Urban Poor Coalition, said that we are irritated since we know that pork barrel is a big fund, but they can't even provide money for housing or other needs. Civic groups had issued a call for a protest last week after a state audit showed some lawmakers had funneled 10 billion pesos, or around 226 million U.S. dollars in total, to non-existent projects and groups under the previous president of Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, now charged with plunder and electoral fraud. Police said 60,000 protesters thronged Luneta Park, some wearing pig masks and headgear. Others carried banners reading scrap pork barrel or no to pork. Organizers hoping for a million strong turnout nationwide issued the call online on Facebook and collected signatures to press the government to scarp the scheme. And Krizi Valoro, an, an, an IT employee who said she heard of the protest through social networking sites, uh, she said that they believe that Technology plays a role, and thank God for Facebook, and we're all here because of that. And it spread like viral all over the net, and we thank God for us to be here and for our voices to be heard. Aquino, however, said on Friday last week that government would plug leaks in the fund, an announcement apparently timed to preempt Monday's march, and a presidential spokesman said the protesters and government wanted the same thing. Aquino told reporters that they think that PDAF are theirs to spend whatever they want. But this is clearly not the case. This is the money of the people we're talking about, and it should be spent for the people and not for a few greedy hands. About 1,500 police were deployed, but no incidents were reported. 
Singaporean Prime Minister Li Xianlong, who is in China for a week. Visit has said that China is keen to review and improve its free trade agreement with ASEAN and that Singapore will do its part in this development. Singapore has remained at the forefront of China's cooperation with ASEAN countries. For instance, Singapore is the only ASEAN member to sign an FTA with China. The size of bilateral currency swap is also the largest between China and ASEAN countries. Li, Singaporean Prime Minister, who was speaking to reporters about issues he discussed in a meeting on Monday morning with Chinese Premier Li Keqiang at the Great Hall of the People. He added that China plays a very important role in ASEAN's context of cooperation with many countries in the world and developing an open region. He also exchanged views with Premier Li on the dispute between China and some ASEAN members regarding in South China Sea, saying that he explained to the Chinese leader that Singapore has always maintained a consistent position that the issue should be managed peacefully and in accordance with international law. The Chinese Premier and his Singaporean counterpart also agreed to explore new collaborative opportunities in China's less developed regions. In the afternoon, Prime Minister Li met Chinese President Xi Jinping, who described the visit as timely, reflecting the importance of Singapore-China ties. President Xi also reiterated that China's commitments for peaceful development and friendly ties with its neighbors, including Singapore, both sides sought to deepen political trust and pragmatic cooperation with Prime Minister Li, Singaporean side describing the Joint Councils for Bilateral Cooperation or JCBC as an important mechanism. Both sides pledged to ensure the success of existing projects such as the Suzu Industrial Park, Tianjin Eco City and Jilin Food Zone. They also want to replicate those successes in other parts of China. Since establishing diplomatic relations 20 three years ago, bilateral trade between Singapore and China increased about 24 times. Defense chiefs of the Philippines and Vietnam met yesterday and agreed to pursue further cooperation as Vietnamese Defense Minister General Phiang Quang Tan visited the Philippines. Peter Paul Galvez, spokesman for the Philippine Department of National Defense, DND, said during their meeting, Philippine Defense Secretary Voltaire Gassman and visiting Vietnamese Defense Minister General Quang Tang assessed joint activities of the defense and military establishment and explored cooperative initiatives. Galvez said the initiatives include humanitarian assistance and disaster relief cooperation, given both countries' experience on natural disasters. The two ministers also exchanged views on recent security issues of mutual concern, particularly on the situation in South China Sea and a U.S. policy of rebalancing in the Asia-Pacific region. Galvez added that the visit of General Tan to the Philippines clearly reflects the commitment of both countries to enhance cooperation in jointly developing their defense capabilities. The DND spokesman also added that defense exchanges between the two nations have been progressing since the signing of a defense cooperation agreement back in 2010. Tan arrived in Manila on Sunday for a three day visit to the Philippines. He is uh, scheduled to leave the country today. And now let's have a look at a report from the stars, Malaysia's as Perodas roads continue to go further. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak says Perodua will continue to maintain its low production costs so that its cars can be the most affordable locally. He says not only should future Prodoa cars be the cheapest in the country, the company should also ensure that its vehicles are of high quality with good safety features. With its new plant poised to be in operation a year from now, Najib says the car manufacturer should also look into the possibility of increasing its export volume, especially to neighboring countries. Pada masa sekarang, Prodoa mengeksport lebih kurang 10,000 unit setahun. Saya berharap jumlah ini dapat ditingkatkan kepada kadar yang jauh lebih tinggi lagi. Produk yang akan dikeluarkan, model-model barunya akan dapat 
diperlihatkan kualiti yang semakin bertambah baik. Di samping itu, saya juga telah diberitahu bahawa Pro2 ingin mengekalkan strategi untuk mengeluarkan kereta yang paling rendah kosnya dan model baru yang akan dipasarkan pada tahun hadapan akan juga dijual pada harga yang paling murah sekali di pasaran tempatan kita. Najib was speaking at Perodua's Hari Raya gathering and the launch of a coffee table book in conjunction with his 20th anniversary. The Prime Minister also paid tribute to Perodua for being a well-known brand and creating a niche market as the manufacturer of quality compact cars. Najib says Perodua has provided job opportunities to some 130,000 people nationwide. Kachin can be a key state in accelerating Myanmar's economic growth, said the chief minister after the break. Thailand Commerce Ministry yesterday acknowledged that Thailand would definitely miss the, its export growth target of 7 to 7.5% this year after shipments in the first seven months rose only 0.6% amid global economic struggles. However, the ministry said that it will try hard to drive the export. Commerce Minister Niwat Thamrong Bunsong Paisan will meet with each manufacturing industry to draw up a strategy to promote outbound shipments. By the middle of next month, the ministry will confer with its overseas Thai trade representative and exporters to finalize the new export target. They should also draft plans to promote trade for the rest of the year. Washari V. Muktayon, Permanent Secretary of the Ministry said yesterday. The ministry reported that export in July declined for the third straight month by 1.48 percent year on year to 19.06 billion US dollars. Imports grew 1.08 percent to 21.34 billion US dollars, resulting in a trade deficit of 281 million US dollars. Niwa Tamrong said that export continued to drop last month because of the serious impact from the world's economic downturn, the European Union's sovereign debt crisis, slowing growth of many markets, mainly India, China and Japan, and the political turbulence in the Middle East. Wachari acknowledged that the ministry would face difficulties meeting the export target this year, although the BAD has weakened many negative factors, particularly the global economic slowdown downturn have had a bigger impact than thought previously. However, other countries have also faced export shrinkage this year. In the first five months of the year, Indonesia's export fell by 6.58 percent, the Philippines by 7.48 percent, Sri Lanka's fell by 6.9 percent, India's fell by 1.81 percent, and China's fell by 3.47 percent. Kachin's chief minister said that the state has fallen behind all because of a civil war. However, all that could change soon, and Kachin state can become one of the key states in Myanmar accelerating its national economic growth. From its close proximity to economic giants like China to its abundant natural resources, Kachin, located in Myanmar's upper north, is well placed to help lead the country in its development. But plagued with civil unrest, the state with a population of 1.6 million has insisted fallen behind. La Jong Yang Seng, chief minister of Kachin state government, said that the ceasefire process takes time, but it would be better, of course, if we can complete the process faster. But during this process, the aim is to build trust between the government, of, the, the government military and the Kachin independence army step by step. We can achieve sustainable peace if both sides are committed to coming up with concrete solutions through more dialogues. The chief minister is fully cognizant that without stability, foreign businesses will not be keen to invest in Kachin. He said the development cannot be achieved without stability. If Kachin state is in peace, it will be easy to develop this place. 
So our state is between the most populous countries of India and China, and we're the nearest in distance to the two nations. We have water resources for hydropower plants, which are essential for genera generating electricity. We also have a lot of natural resources. Our people are also capable. If Kachin is peaceful and attracts foreign investments, the people in Kachin will benefit from plenty of job opportunities, and this will bring benefits and developments. Transportation will also improve quickly, and Kachin then will become the most developed Myanmar state. Le Jong has only been in his position for the last two years, but he's keen to move the state up the growth ladder as soon as possible. He said that my state government and the people are ready to work with the central government for developing our state. If Kachin is stable, I'm sure no one can stop the rapid development of this state. The chief minister is also eager to showcase a different side of Kachin to foreigners. While Kachin is a state known for its jade and gold, but the people have not been able to fully maximize its advantages because of the ongoing conflict. With the latest peace agreement, the chief minister hopes that the people will be able to tap the state's potential and to develop and catch up with the rest of the states across the country. According to U.S. officials, the U.S. has agreed for the first time to sell the new AH-64E Abash attack helicopters to Indonesia. The deal is worth 500 million U.S. dollars, including radar, training and maintenance. Indonesia will purchase eight new Apache helicopters made by Boeing. The deal was announced during a visit by the U.S. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel, who is on a tour of Southeast Asia to Jakarta. He said in a statement that providing Indonesia this would class the helicopters is an example of the U.S. commitment to help build Indonesia's military capability. The deal will help Indonesia respond to a range of contingencies, including counter piracy operations and maritime awareness. The U.S. has recently stepped up its diplomatic efforts in East Asia in order to establish a strong presence there in the face of advances by China, according to the correspondence. That's it for today's edition of Good Morning Aussie. We'll see you again, same time, same place, same channel. I'm Pat Surang Dei Cha, Putarang Si. Thank you for watching. I'm Nira Chamlai Saklamia. Sawadee Sawadee